Greetings, brothers and sisters. Biden warns Putin, Putin of strong response if Russia invades the Ukraine. So I talk about this. Um, um, you know, earlier today I made the 23rd edition to my journey series, and I go into this a little bit. I read one of the Whispers prophecies that talks about how nuclear power will ruin this world. And so in the heartfulness system, World War III happens. Like it's something that's talked about like it's already happened. It's unavoidable. And, you know, nuclear bombs and weapons, missiles are used. And it's going to, you know, mess up the world in ways that we really can't comprehend. And so coming from that perspective, whenever I hear news like this, you know, the the Democrats have been all over Russia for whatever reason. They seem to want, you know, nuclear war or whatever. They want to provoke this. I'm not sure why. They've been talking about Russia for years. Here's Putin and Jojo Magoo. <laughs> And so um, whenever we get any step closer, there was the stuff that happened in Syria under Obama, you know, four years where, you know, Trump seemed to like Putin. And now there's this. And, you know, the Russians and the Chinese, I mean, they might be looking at this like it's time to take America down. Who knows what this is, you know, all about. But, you know, it's not a good thing, <laughs> you know, at least in terms of... Um, my understanding of this that there's only way this there's only one way that this inevitably ends right there's no version of this that doesn't involve the use of nuclear weapons and you know all of it and it could be as soon as the next 5 years you know 4 or 5 years from now based in the the whispers of the brighter world prophecy so i'm always you know i mean things have to happen for a reason I, someone left a comment saying I don't know the exact, um, you know, way that they, they worded it, but I've had a number of comments like this where people say, well, we're just supposed to sit back and allow the system to collapse, right? Allow the God's world to collapse. And this isn't God's world, right? This is an aberration. And it's going to collapse from the fact that it's not a part of God's creation in the sense that it it wasn't built with, you know, God's will behind it, right? It wasn't built on the divine system. It's an ego-driven system. And because of that, it's, you know, causing all of these problems that inevitably will lead to its downfall and collapse. But even if it was built with divinity as it's based and center, systems collapse, right? The world changes. Things don't work out, right? There's every once in a while upheavals. Every once in a while, the world, you know, there's forest fires and volcanoes and, you know, tectonic plates moving and earthquakes and, you know, ice ages. I mean, there's all these things there on planet Earth. Nothing lasts forever, and certainly our system shouldn't last forever. And it's inevitably going to, you know, go by the wayside, and hopefully we build something bigger. So I want to get to Alec Baldwin here. So it's funny. Um, one person sent me this. It's um ambushed video. Wait, Mr. Baldwin, I have to ask you, what brings you to New York City? I asked you to leave. So there's Hilaria. She's taping herself. And she said to the guy, I asked you to leave, right? Now, I don't like ambush uh, journalism. I was talking about this with my wife the other day. I don't like, you know, anybody doing this. I think it's, you know, you can't excuse your bad behavior because other people are behaving badly. So somebody sent me this and another person sent me, and said the same thing, basically, that they don't like this type of behavior. And, you know, I'm showing it because it gets a little bit weird and funny, you know. But, I'm, again, I don't endorse ambush, ambush journalism, going up to people and sticking a camera in their face. You know, do you want that done to you, right? It's just unpleasant. Like, it's not something people should do. Like, I don't like to be filmed by people when I'm not ready, you know, in general, <laughs> you know. Like, I don't even do it to myself. I don't film myself. And I wouldn't want other people coming up and, you know, taping me. You know, that's just the way everybody thinks that, you know, they can now video other people, and especially when people are screwing up or having a bad day, and then make money off it on the Internet. And so someone saw Alec Baldwin here. He's going into a house. Does that look like, is that 118, right? 
18 is a significant number. Mr. Bolin, why, who, who's, who's here? I asked you to go away. Please go away. Uh, this is not, this is not, not anyone's private home. Are you, private home. this is not. She had to restrain him, right? <laughs> She's grabbing his coat. And so, um, you know, like this is, um, <laughs> classic, um, Alec losing his temper for a guy who's, you know, it's falling apart. His story's falling apart. And so there's so many people out there showing how the Colt 45 that Alec Baldwin was using on the set, you can't pull back the hammer and not have it click, right? There's no way what he said happened, happened unless his, his finger was depressing the, the trigger already. And so his story's falling apart. But just him getting angry like this and losing it on some guy filming him, which he often does, you know, him snapping the way that he does, right? Like, it's not good for him. Like, it just shows you he's, you know, unhinged, and he's been unhinged for a while, right? Again, don't agree with this, but, you know, like, it's, it's very telling, so I've included this in this video. He's fallen apart, and his, you know, wife is... Um, <laughs> You know, his Spanish wife, who's a white girl from Boston, isn't able to keep him from getting unhinged. Half of likely voters have a very unfavorable opinion of Kamala Harris in poll. And so Kamala Harris, this is being reported by Democrats as well. We can watch this a little bit here. Or do people just not want to work for her anymore? It's natural for staffers who've thrown their heart and soul into a job to uh, be ready to move on to a new challenge after a few years. He's, so there he's asking about um, Kamala Harris staffers moving on. And she said, after a few years. And I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? It's only been, what, eight months? It's not even a year since the election, right? Her staffers are bailing on her. Kamala Harris described as a bully and soul-destroying boss. <laughs> you know, so um, this was a part of it. Like, these people are not wanting to work with her. All of her staffers, like a number of them, are quitting. Harris aid mocked for love of job tweet amid turmoil. Blink twice if you need help. And so um, Kamala Harris has always been unlikable. She didn't do well with Democrats. She didn't even bother to stick around for the voting because she was polling at less than one percent they stuck her in there because she because she checks a bunch of boxes right demographically jojo magoo promised a woman so he says his vice president was definitely going to be a woman he committed to that and then he was pressed on well she should be a person of color so he had to do that and also she is you know part indian you know east indian so that she clicked a bunch of demographics but as a person nobody likes her right you know she's not likable and so you know i mean this is where we are right now and with kamala jojo magoo has fallen apart mentally and kamala isn't a legitimate replacement like the democrats really screwed themselves you know they went for the short term like everyone hates trump you know let's let's use the everyone hates trump campaign but they didn't produce quality candidates that could win on their own merit, right? Two very incompetent, unlikable candidates. And Jojo Magoo isn't going to get reelected. And Kamala Harris isn't going to be elected president. So, you know, this is where we are. So I'm going to explain this in a better way. Or I've, I've said this before, but I want to say it a little bit differently. So everything ends, right? There's going to be a time where there's no, what we consider life, right? material three-dimensional life on planet earth no people no animals no anything right no you know trees uh, whatever it is so everything will be gone and there'll be a time that earth doesn't exist at all the sun doesn't exist the whole universe doesn't exist right and so everything ends like everything that we think is permanent everything that we think is too big to fail is going to end and we've had this happen over and over again on planet Earth, there's been many civilizations more advanced than what we have now technologically that are now gone, right? Like things that we don't even have any archaeological proof of. And there's been empires in the past that we've known about, right? 
There's been empires in Europe and in, you know, Greece and Rome, which I guess is part of Europe. Empires in Africa, you know, the pyramids. I mean, things, ruins all over the world where there was these great empires, great empires in India and, and uh, China and these places that have since fallen, right? Governments that have fallen over and over again, languages that have disappeared. I mean, whole, like, you know, groups of uh, animals that are extinct. I mean, things happen like this. And it's hard for us to conceive of because we've been in a very stable time. But America has only been the dominant country now for, what, 50, 60 years? I mean, England was that for a while. And then these other empires... But empires fall, right? And on a personal level, all of us have, you know, relationships that sometimes they're worth fighting for and sometimes they're just freaking doomed, right? You have families that are, you know, not worth fighting for. Sometimes, you know, people can come together as a family and change and, uh, you know, get, get rid of their dysfunction and become, you know, healthy and strong or whatever it might be. And sometimes it's just... Oh, you got to stay away from your family. They're, you know, they're a cancer to you, right? I mean, sometimes that's the answer. Sometimes you can fix something. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can save a marriage. Sometimes you have to just accept that the divorce is what's best, right? Sometimes the company you work for can be saved. Sometimes you have to, you know, get your golden parachute out and bail or whatever it is, right? Sometimes you can go all in and sometimes you have to fold. Like this is just, you know. <laughs> I mean, this is how it is, right? And in all that, you know, for each situation, you have to evaluate what's the right course of action, like what's, you know, the best use to one's energies. And for me, I believe the system is not salvageable. The system we're 100% dependent on is demonic and bad for us all. And so the reason I believe that, the first thing, you know, happened when I read the heartfulness uh, literature, you know, reality at dawn, my vision, where Babaji, the second master of the system, said that the new civilization would be built on the bones and ashes of this one. And so, yeah, I, you know, I read it and I like, you know, I was receiving the transmission, the divine energy that's available in the system. And I was like, all right, you know, I, I'll believe that, right? But there was not really any material evidence, right? The world was kind of screwed up, but not like it is now, right? So that's back in the you know early 1990s but a lot has happened since then there was a big event in 2001 there was the onset of the internet and the release of all this information new waves of information new waves of awareness new waves of you know of a consciousness shift and it just appears to be falling apart now right like on every level so you know in 2014 i figured out the economy in ways that I hadn't before. And I realized that the economy was insolvent. You know, I really dove deep into it and that it wasn't fixable. There's just too much debt and there's other problems, structural problems. But then there's the immorality. There's the total degradation of the human beings. Human beings keep on getting weaker and weaker and stupider and stupider. I mean, it's just and not just in terms of generation after generation, but people, you know, even older generations, people are sort of deteriorating into more and more unnatural and demonic ways of being. We see that on a daily basis, right? Things are a lot worse now than they were. And then there's the apocalyptic movies and just the whole, I mean, everyone has this feeling that things are falling apart. They're not getting better. And, you know, you know, one thing after another, the COVID stuff, all these things, right? And so it's the moral collapse, the you know weakening of the human condition, the disconnection of God, the breaking up of the family, all of those things. And then you look at the economy and you know there's no way to fix it. And that the system is an egotistical system, an ego-driven system that's based in desire and materiality and disconnects you from God on every level. And so there's a lot of people in the truth community or on the left or the right who I figured out there's one group that's wrecking it. And if we get rid of that group, everyone else can turn the system around. You're not being honest with yourself. It's the fact that you are 100% dependent on this system and you can't imagine life without it. So it's just too scary to look at the whole system 
and see the, you know, system can't be saved. And I don't know how long it's going to stick around. I would prefer longer, right? The longer, the better for me. You know, I just, I'm older and I know how much it is to change, but maybe it won't be. Maybe it'll be better for me on every level. I don't know. Like I can't say, but I, you know, I'm relaxed and open about it, but I understand that we're in a period of time where the system can't be saved. That's, you know, a waste of energy. And so we can do things. We can change. We can connect to God. We can transform ourselves and we can start creating a new system from a better place or at least begin the the seeds of it, right? Start retaining things and think about things that can make a better system. And number one is to connect to the divine, you know, within yourself and each person doing this and manifesting a world that's, you know, based in divine laws and principles. And, you know, that to me is the best utilization of whatever resources we have. The system's going to, you know, limp along and collapse whenever that happens, but we can at least prepare ourselves and our children for it in the future. And there's all these, you know, things that are going to start happening where you're going to be like, all right, we're pretty screwed now, right? Like we've passed the point of no return. And so, you know, each person has to come up with this themselves. Each person has to, you know, come to terms with this. And it's not easy when you're, you know, I mean, when you're fear-based or locked in and, you know, you can't imagine a world different than the one you live in, then, yeah, it's going to be pretty terrifying. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramato, definitely important for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.